Hey there, friends. So today we are working our, our way through the teacher's handbook of Sloyd as we are learning basic hand tool skills and we are on exercise 37, which is called the pegging joint. Uh, remember, there's links down below if you're looking for a printed version of this or even a free online version. So take advantage of those. So what is a pegging joint? Well, a pegging joint is used primarily with square stock where you put a, a tenon, a round tenon on one end and you'll drill a mortise with an auger bit in the other end. And the two go together, just like that. So nice tight fit. So where would you use a pegging joint? Um, if you've ever looked at balusters, uh, old stair balusters that are coming out of a house that um, is being remodeled. You'll notice that there's often round tenons at, at the top of those. Will, will look something similar to this. That's a good application, but I think the most common application is in, in chairs, stools, and things like that. So in this case, I've got my square stock, and this is simulating a chair leg, possibly. Uh, this could be a stretcher, and we can do a straight 90 degree if your chair leg is running uh, vertically, that'll give you a horizontal fit. Or if you're uh, putting a little angle on the, the chairs, you can drill the holes in like this. And again, you'll get a horizontal stretcher, but an angled leg. So I think this is probably the most common. Uh, a couple of things that you need to, to note is that um, you should use the same size auger bit, and you should use the same auger bit to drill the hole in the, uh, to set for the, the tenon as you do for the mortise. If you can see here, we have just uh, found our center. I used a center punch to, uh, to just get started. That is absolutely not necessary. I have already drilled out the mortise part of this. And now we can just put the auger bit in there and we're only going to go down deep enough so that we score the top and we know the exact area that we need to carve out. So we'll set this aside. Now we got to figure out our depth. So what I like to do is come in with a depth finder. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight depth finder. Um, we're going to set our depth appropriately and back that off about a sixteenth of an inch. And the reason for that is we don't want the tenon bottoming out down here. We, we uh, give us a nice better shoulder that way. So we'll come in again with our pencil, mark where that should go. From that point, I switch to a square and a marking knife. Okay, And we'll put the marking knife right here up against that. And we'll score. One, two, three, rotate the piece of wood, put the blade in that nick, and then present the square to the blade. Okay, rotate it again, knife blade in the notch. Okay, and one last time, knife blade in the notch, square, one, two, three. Now, if you do it this way, you are much more likely to have perfectly matching lines all the way across. Okay. This next part is completely optional. Um, and what I do is put in a little knife wall here. Now, if you remember the last video I did on the half lap joint, 
I made three versions of the half lap. I made two where I used the knife wall and I made a third one where I forgot to do the knife wall. And I'll give you a guess as to which one was the most accurate or the which two were the most accurate. Maybe I should say which one, the one that wasn't accurate at all. That just makes it a little easier for your saw to register. All right, take this out. Let's grab the shooting board. And now I wanna put a little bit of a relief cut in here. We don't need to go down much, but that's that knife wall is just not enough to give us the, the relief that we need. So we come in here. to go down about an eighth of an inch just a couple of strokes that's really all we need there we go we don't want to go too deep if we go too deep actually it can weaken your tenon Got that in there. We'll take the bench hook out and we'll come in now. Mount this in the chip or in the mice. All right, can we see? Can you see that? Let's move this out. Oh. Did you get a good look at the scribe line there? See that circle? That's what we want to pair down to. Now the stroke we're going to be using is our vertical pairing stroke and if you're interested in that video 15 of this series is our uh, the chisel strokes including the pairing and the link to that will be at the end of the video so I go in a little bit less than halfway and look how that just kind of falls away. Now you can do it with your hand or you can take your chisel mallet and do some light taps. So we're just going to work our way around. Taking a little bit at a time. Let's not get too excited. You know I've told you before that I I struggle with patience and uh, I want to get to the end result before I'm ready. So really trying to take my time and every time you come in here you want to take about half of the material. Okay, just about half which means we're, we're going to come up short. It's going to take us several trips around. Every time we do this, we're taking a little bit less material. Because right, we're wanting to actually sneak up on that. We're starting to get close. Now eventually you're going to get to a point where you, you just can't take half strokes anymore. You gotta but we want to stay a little bit away from the line if we can all right because we want to sneak up on this thing sneak up so all right now that i'm getting close to my line i'm actually going to set the the mallet aside here uh, the other thing i have that that helps me with this is i'm drilled out a hole same size hole using the same auger bit 
And uh, this is my test piece. So this is one I did for a three quarter inch hole. This is one I've, I've done for the one inch because I'm using the one inch auger bit. And you see, as expected, it's not quite there. So now we're actually going to just pare down vertically. Okay, and you want to keep it as vertical as you can. Okay, get down close to the line, pair down vertically. All right, make sure your chisel is not pointing towards your legs. Need to have some wood between you and your, your flesh. All right, we're getting real close. Rotate the, the piece in your vise if you need to, but make sure that you are not pointing uh, towards your legs or any, any piece of exposed skin. All right, so that's close. We're not quite there yet, but we're close. And you can see we, the top is okay, but the bottom is not. Um, again, it's close, but it's just not quite there. Now, the first time I did this, I actually made this one about a year ago. Uh, just testing it out. You know, you can see it's not real pretty, but it's my first one. But uh, this joint, I have tried my best to break this thing apart without actually taking a mallet to it. Um, but because I wasn't careful about the, the shape, it's actually more of a, a cone or a trapezoid in there. So at the, the bottom of the, the mortise, it's not making good t contact, but it is making contact at the bottom. But even with that misshape, you know, it's a, it's a strong joint. So let's come in here. Now we're getting all the way down to the bottom. And let's clean up this shoulder. So you remember the, the strokes, the, the chisel strokes, we had the vertical pairing stroke, and then we had the horizontal pairing stroke. And we just come in here, hold the chisel up as close to the, the tip as you can, and just come in with some like, stabbing motions, get that cleaned up. See, we got a little bit of fuzzies right here where the shoulder meets the tenon. Let's just smooth that out just a little bit more. Pull this out and let's see how it sits on there. So, hmm. getting a nice, nice tight fit over here, but a little bit of a gap over on the other side. So let's come in here. Still see a few fuzzies over on this side as well. So. That's a good fit there. So now we take it. Like I said this was a pre-drilled mortise that I put in there earlier using the same bit. And again, I got a, a good fit over on this side. It's a little bit loose on this side. And what that tells me is that my my cut, my, my cuts weren't exactly vertical. So let's see if we can take down this shoulder here just a wee bit. Now let's put that back in there. All 
know what I'm going to do? I don't think I, I retracted this quite enough. It feels like I'm bottoming out. I don't, I don't know that I am, but it feels like I'm bottoming out. So let's, let's just take some of this off. This is not the important part of the joint. The important part of the joint is the, is the long grain here on the edge. Okay, I'm definitely not bottoming out. Got a good fit there. And a little bit of a gap there. So we can keep cleaning this up, working on it. Uh, probably we need to take that shoulder down just a little bit more. tighter fit. All right. Still wouldn't call it perfect, but I think we're in much better shape. We'll take our, our glue butt, you know, put a little glue here. So there's a nice good contact between the, the, the long grain, long grain of the mortise, long grain of the tenon. We'll do that. And this is another joint that will last for generations. Okay, friends, pegging joint. Nice, fun, simple joint. Uh, easy to do. Uh, just a couple of things you need to remember. Use the same auger bit, spade bit, whatever it is that you're using. Use the same bit to do both the mortise and scribing your circle and you'll be fine. Take it slow, take it easy, you'll be good. Give this thing a try. I, th I think you'll enjoy this joint. Well, friends, till next time, take care. God bless.